some of the dust from this sacred place to enter into our hearts. We want to help devotees to have an experience. And we want to take part in that with them. According to Chaitanya Bhagavat, Skanda Purana, and different Stala Puranas, about Jagannath Puri Dham, to be able to come to this Dham means that you've done be thousands and thousands of austerities and devotional acts and previous births. It's a very, very rare, very amazing thing. And what is this Jagannath Puri Dham? You, I can see you're all very sophisticated, learned Vaishnavas. You must know the difference between Madurja Moya Leela and Aishvarja Moya Leela, or pastimes that are very sweet, like Vrindavan. How many of you here aspire to go to Vaikuntha? Raise your hands. How many of you here would like to go to Vrindavan? It's your ultimate goal. Raise your hand. If you don't raise your hand, maybe you won't go there. <laughs> we want to go to this place because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this place. And we want to understand what is the secret of this place. Why did he come here? And what did he get from this? So this place, Bhubaneshwara, we're at today, this is the entrance way to Jagannath Puri Dham. This is Mathura, is the entrance way into Braj. And here we take shelter of Shiv Shambhu Mahadev, Lord Shiva, who's Ketrapala, he's the guardian of the Holy Dham. We have a process, it's called Shravanam, Kirtanam, and then? 
Vishnu Smarana. We heard about anticipating coming to the holy place. What about after we leave the holy place, we leave the Parikram, we leave the, <coughs> the pilgrimage? Then what? Do we just forget everything? Or can we retain something? Can we put it in our heart and keep it? Uh, it's my humble suggestion that you make a few little notes every evening and we'll in this way I, I would say we do some churning of the nectar it will be part of the churning process <clears throat> to produce and reproduce nectar so Bhuvaneshwar Dham is the entrance way to Jagannath Puri Dham and that entrance way is both physical it's also emotional, it's spiritual. It's an entranceway in different levels, and we'd like to try to speak something about that. This is the place of Lord Shiva, and tomorrow we'll go to a number of different temples. It'll be a little bit like a cross between Chaitanya Chai and Rita and Indiana Jones. <laughs> uh, we like to begin with Iskand Bhuvaneshwar. And there's a lot of stories with that. I don't, we don't have time for all that, but I should say a little something. You should know this is Srila Prabhupada's last founded project. And Srila Prabhupada came here in 1977, and on the day of Nityananda Triodasi, which is coming up on the 1st of uh, February, he established the cornerstone here at this temple. And he stayed here for 18 days in 1977, 19, from, I don't know, 1974 on or so. It was unheard of for Srila Prabhupada to stay that long in one place. He stayed here for 18 days. And an interesting thing is, there was nothing here. This building wasn't here. The buildings across the street, there was no buildings anywhere. In fact, nobody wanted to come here. There's one family who donated the property, Chubby Kanungo, was her name, and she donated this property. It was on the edge of what was going to be a national highway. You see it today. And Prabhupada sent one of his disciples, my revered spiritual master, Gurgavinda Maharaj, to come here. Gurgavinda Maharaj came here. There's no place to stay. Nobody wanted to come here. They, they said there's ghosts out here. There was dacoits. He was giving lectures sometimes to the villagers. Once he sat down for a few hours and speaking Krishna Kata, when he got up to go, a cobra fell off of his lap. <laughs> it crawled up onto his lap. It was that kind of place. There were wild elephants here. To this day, if you want to come with me, we can walk about from here, maybe a half an hour walk. In the northern direction is a wild elephant preserve. There's a big fence around it, don't worry. <laughs> but there's wild elephants to this day not far away. The devotees, when they came here with Srila Prabhupada, they said, Prabhupada, what is this? There was no toilets. There was no running water. My grandmother brought electricity here so that Srila Prabhupada could dictate in his microphone. They wanted Prabhupada to stay in the state guest house. Prabhupada said, no. I'll stay in this mud hut on the property of my child, Gorgovind. He made a place for me. And he came here and stayed in this hut. And it was here one night, Hari Sai Prabhu, Satsarup Maharaj and Gurgavinda Maharaj were staying in one room in that mud hut. The other room, Srila Prabhupada was there. One night, they heard Srila Prabhupada up at one o'clock in the morning. And Prabhupada was dictating his translation of Srimad Bhagavatam. And they heard him saying, 10th Canto, chapter 1, verse 1. It was here that Srila Prabhupada started translating the 10th Canto, of the Srimad Bhagavatam. A wonderful thing. Prabhupada was taking showers here. They, they made some bamboo uh, screen. Prabhupada was taking a shower behind it with a bucket and he was going and doing his bodily business in the fields. Very, very primitive. And the devotees were telling Prabhupada, Prabhupada, this is not good. We should do something in Puri. We don't want to have a temple here. No one's going to come here. And Srila Prabhupada, he called for Gorgavinda Maharaj and he told them that they don't understand. And he told them they have problems. They can't stay. So you stay here. I want a temple here. 
And Prabhupada later said some very cryptic things. Don't ask me to explain what these mean. I don't know what they mean. But he said, one day this will be the most important temple in the world. And he said, I place all my mercy here. I don't ask me what that means. <laughs> the devotees are telling Srila Prabhupada that we should make a temple in Puri. Prabhupada said, no, we'll make a temple here. He said, Prabhupada, there's nothing here. No one's going to come. And Prabhupada said, one day this will become the center of Bhubaneswar. <laughs> the devotees kind of looked around the scorpions and the cobras and the elephants and they said, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Today, this part of Bhubaneswar, IRC village, Nayapali, is the fastest growing part of Bhubaneswar. It's becoming the center of the city. And Srila Prabhupada's words are coming true. Very amazing thing. Prabhupada told Gorgavinda Maharaj and the devotees, you make three altars in the temple. One altar is for Gorni Thai, one altar is for Krishna Balaram, and another altar is for Jagannath. I want Gorni Thai to be made out of brass, here in Arisa, traditional Arisa style. And don't make a deity of Jagannath. He said, Jagannath will come on his own. So when they opened the temple, I think it was 1994, they installed deities of Krishna, Balaram, and Gorni Thai, and there was no Jagannath. It was just an empty altar. And they did the ceremonies, they opened the temple. A few weeks later, one man came to the temple, he said, oh, this is really nice, and he said, I'd like someone to come and do a program in my house. He invited Gorgavinder Maharaj, you please come and do a program in our house. So he went there, and after the program, uh, that man, he came to Gorgavinder Maharaj and said, Maharaj said, please come in the back room, I want to show you something. He took him back there, and he saw there were deities of Jagannath, like this big. And he said, I want to donate these to the temple. And Srila Prabhupada's words came true. And this is why I'm very, very excited about this particular yatra, because I wanted to come with Maharaj, because he's such a very, very internal person. And I know he'll create a very special mood, and we'll be able to go in some very, very amazing secret places of the heart.